The common cold is something we will all experience at one point or another, and sometimes it's a little more often than we'd like. Dealing with that nagging sore throat and cough is extremely unpleasant. And for most people, including myself, the first instinct is to go to my local pharmacy and pick up a few medications to ease the symptoms. But did you know? Most of the medications we purchase have no real benefit. So we're basically just throwing our hard-earned money away. That's why I decided to make a video showcasing medicine with proven benefits backed by research. And some common medications we tend to purchase but have not demonstrated effectiveness in the real patient population. But first things first, please don't overdose. I know you're thinking, what is she talking about? But can you take a guess as to what causes more than 100,000 calls to poison control each year? If you guessed acetaminophen, common name Tylenol, you are right. So the next time you are running to the pharmacy with that panicked urge to buy everything in sight, I need you to stop for a second once you arrive, pick up the medication you are interested in, and look at the active ingredient. If we take a look at the back of this Tylenol box, we can see that one capsule contains 500 mg of active acetaminophen per dose. And if we look at the directions, it states to not exceed more than six capsules in a day. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, obviously I can read. But unfortunately, a lot of people, including myself before I studied medicine, don't know that a lot of over-the-counter medications contain similar ingredients. And especially in combination products such as Alka-Seltzer Cold, which also contains acetaminophen. I remember when I'd get sick, I'd purchase a bunch of different brand name medications and mix them together like I was a chemist. However, I don't know if this lady's really mixing anything looks like air to me, but anyways, let's get back to the point. If we add up the max dose of this over-the-counter Tylenol, it gives us 3,000 mg per day. This means we should not take more than this, including from other combination products. Exceeding this dose can lead to some pretty nasty side effects such as liver disease. So unless otherwise directed by your doctor, always follow the directions on the package. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's discuss which drugs have no real evidence to support their use, with the first drugs being the cough medications. There are two active ingredients that are recommended for a cough, dextromethorphan, which is given for a dry cough, and guaifenesin, which is given for a wet cough. These actives are usually found in drugs such as Robitussin, Delsim, and Mucinex. I used to run to the cough syrups when I had a cold believing it would help me, but looking back at it, I realized they never did a thing for my cough. And that's because numerous studies demonstrated that cough syrups simply don't work, and people who swear by them are most likely experiencing a placebo effect. So that's why I give these drugs a thumbs down. The next active ingredient is used for congestion to help ease that stuffy clogged up nose. Specifically phenylephrine, commonly found in Sudafed, has no benefits and doesn't work. We have known for years that these drugs do not work, but for some odd reason they remained on the shelves. Thankfully, though, the FDA recently published a statement acknowledging that phenylephrine works no better than placebo, meaning it does not work at all, and that's why it also gets the thumbs down. Herbal preparations are the new cool kid on the block, claiming they can cure you using natural ingredients. Now, I'm not saying that natural remedies don't work, but certain drugs which contain elderberry, for example, state that they are effective at treating a cold and using branding such as Nature's Way to lure people. Though one study did find that elderberry is effective at lowering the duration of a cold and easing the symptoms. If you dig into the study, a few things stand out. For one, the patients took a large dose, which varied from 600 mg to 1200 mg, and they took the medication 10 days before they experienced a cold. That's because this study looked into air travel, which is a common place where people get sick, and the effects of elderberry extract in people who got the cold during their travels. One issue with this is I can't predict when I'm getting a cold, and the average dose of these over-the-counter agents is 50 mg, far from the 600 to 1200, and with those facts in mind, I give these a thumbs down. Once I was done with my over-the-counter panic purchases, I would think of what else I needed to help get rid of the cold. Once I calmed down, I would remember people would always talk about the powerful nature of orange juice and how it is essential when fighting off a cold. Well, not really, taking a healthy amount of vitamin C every day, which means prior to you getting sick, may possibly help you get over the cold a bit quicker due to a stronger immune system. But purchasing 1,000 mg of emergency is not going to do anything for you, especially once you are already sick. 
So though oranges are a yummy treat, they get the thumbs down for cold treatment. You are probably thinking everything you've been told is a lie and are now wondering so what can I do, but don't worry there are some great options to help. Let's begin with any aches or a fever, by the way fevers are pretty uncommon in colds and are usually a symptom of the flu or COVID, but you might still experience them. If that's the case you will want to reach for the classics including acetaminophen, which again is Tylenol or ibuprofen found in Motrin and Advil. These agents have been extensively studied and data does back their benefits. You can have either or, but make sure to follow your doctor's directions, especially if you have liver disease or an allergy to aspirin. Hence the classics get a thumbs up. Now for that congestion, a runny nose or sneezing studies show that combination products that contain a decongestant and an antihistamine are superior to either agent alone. This includes drugs such as Allegra D and Claritin D, where the D stands for decongestant. And I know we mentioned earlier that phenylephrine is useless, however pseudofedrin, a different type of decongestant, is effective, and when looking for it, you'll have to go directly to the pharmacy because they are kept in the back due to the risk of abuse. That's why this combo gets a thumbs up. So what about that cough and sore throat? Well, I'm sorry to say there isn't anything currently on the market to help with either of those symptoms. But don't panic, two simple at-home remedies may help ease the trouble. The first is a salt water gargle, which consists of mixing a liberal amount of table salt with some water and gargling it, making sure not to swallow it and spitting it out. This should ease the symptoms of a sore throat temporarily, so you might have to keep a glass nearby. And the second is honey. Honey has been shown to be effective in treating both cough and a sore throat in children, and for this reason a teaspoon of honey may also help adults. There is one last thing I needed to talk about before you all rush away for that honey. When I was younger and would get antibiotics, I was guilty of not finishing the full course and would stop when I felt better. And this is a horrible thing to do. All I did was make the bad bacteria in me even stronger to the point that certain antibiotics won't work for me anymore. So if you have any leftover antibiotics, which you should not have, never use them without a new prescription, especially for a cold or flu. Antibiotics are a great life-saving class of drugs, which can fight off some pretty nasty bacteria, but they don't work on viruses and the common cold or flu are both viral infections. So taking antibiotics will only make the bacteria you have resistant to the drug. I'll leave you off with this. The best way to avoid ever catching a cold is to practice good hand hygiene and wearing a mask in public spaces. If you made it to the end, leave a comment telling us what you've tried for a cold that you may think is beneficial or any agents which you think are useless. Thank you.